Yes, of course. Well, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Rather, for this very elegant uh, presentation on reversal of uh, anticoagulation. Uh, I think we'll have uh, questions at the end of uh, this session. So uh, it's now my great pleasure to introduce our uh, next speaker, uh, who is uh, Professor Paolo Paul Coppo, uh, and he will kindly present to us. Uh, on the management of uh, acquired thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpa. Prof. Uh, Coppo is a professor of hematology in uh, Sorbonne University in Paris. Uh, he leads the French reference center for thrombotic, thrombo uh, thrombotic microangiopathies and the Department of Lymphoid Malignancies in St. Anthony Hospital in Paris. His research work is focused on genetics, uh, risk factors, and immune modulatory treatments of immune to uh, TTP. Prof. Kopo, uh, kindly please start the presentation. You are muted, Prof. Kopo. Can you unmute yourself, Prof. Kopo? Uh. Okay, so it should work now, sorry. So yes, thanks a lot, uh, uh, Alzani, for your nice uh, introduction. So I will uh, put my presentation on full screen now. So I hope you can all see my uh, presentation. So I'm uh, very pleased to be here uh, this evening with you to share with you uh, the French experience in the diagnosis and management of uh, thrombotic thrombocytopenic purpura in 2021. So as a reminder uh, here, uh, as you know, TTP is a specific form of uh, thrombotic microangiopathy characterized by the association of a microangiopathic hemolytic anemia, a profound peripheral thrombocytopenia, organ failure of variable severity, and in this disease, we have a biomarker, which is a severe deficiency in adamstatin, which is the enzyme that regulates the size of the von Willebrand factor multimer. And this adamstatin deficiency uh, uh, may be uh, aided either due to uh, bialylic mutations of the encoding gene or alternatively to uh, autoantibodies directed against the enzyme. So you can see that for both forms of the disease, the incidence of these patients is, is rare. We are typically in the field of rat diseases and the, the incidence of TTP, again, does not exceed some cases per million habitants per year. So this is uh, what you need to have in mind regarding clinical uh, presentation of TTP. Uh, those patients are uh, mostly females in uh, three quarters of cases. There is an overrepresentation of African uh, people and uh, people from the West Indies. Uh, patients uh, are uh, typically uh, 40 years old and they uh, have uh, cerebral involvement in up to 50% of cases. You can see interestingly that uh, on uh, a series of patients uh, published 20 years ago, the incidence of uh, uh, cerebral involvement was up to 90% uh, of cases. But uh, year after year, we learned to uh, make the diagnosis of TDP earlier and earlier in these patients. So now <laughs> we can diagnose uh, TTP uh, uh, in uh, patients when they only have hematologic features without uh, organ uh, failure and this is of course uh, better for the for the patients so this means that we uh, uh, are more and more aware about the uh, this disease and the clinical features of the disease regarding biology patients typically have profound cytopenias especially uh, thrombocytopenia uh, in these patients, uh, platelet count is typically below 30,000. On the opposite, uh, uh, renal involvement, although quite frequent, 
uh, is usually milled with creatinine levels typically below 200 micromol per liter. So these clinical features are very important to keep in mind because they could be used to derive clinical scores aimed at anticipating, anticipating uh, adamstatin activity. And this is a crucial aspect in the field because as you know, <laughs> there is some turnaround time uh, for adamstatin activity to be available. And in most centers in the world, adamstatin activity is available after only three to five days. And even in some centers, the enzyme activity is not available at all. So it is crucial at the time we have more and more targeted therapies to be able to make rapidly the diagnosis of TTP and to have an idea about adamstatin activity. And for this, two scores were derived from uh, uh, standard uh, uh, clinical features. So I summarized both scores here, uh, the French score and the plasmic score. And uh, what uh, you need to understand is that both scores go in the same way. They state that in patients with features of thrombotic microangiopathy with no associated condition, including cancer, transplantation, chemotherapy, and severe sepsis. In those patients, a severe thrombocytopenia as defined by a platelet count below 30,000 and a mild renal involvement as defined by a serum creatinine level below 2.26 milligram per deciliter those patients are almost systematically associated with a severe uh, adamstatin deficiency. So this, uh, these uh, two scores are now routinely used for the diagnosis of TTP. <laughs> the French score has been used on uh, two uh, randomized clinical trials that evaluated the usefulness of caplatizumab in this uh, disease. So uh, those scores prove uh, that they are really able for the management of uh, uh, patients in real world. So this is what you have to understand uh, uh, to, uh, um, to understand the treatment of uh, TTP. In these patients, you have uh, in the acquired form of the disease, antibodies that are directed against adam statin and uh, as a result, the enzyme activity is completely uh, abrogated and the substrate of uh, adam the, the uh, von Willebrand factor, accumulates upstream. <coughs> the high molecular weight VWF multimers are hyperadhesive towards platelets, and this leads uh, to the uh, formation of microtrombi in most organs in microvasculature and then to organ damage and death in the absence of adaptive treatment. So once you understood that, uh, you can understand easily that in this disease, you need to replenish adam levels to saturate the anti uh, adam antibodies and then to cleave the large VWF multimers. And this can be achieved uh, by uh, bringing to patients a very large volumes of plasma through plasma exchange. The second approach is immunomodulation to uh, block the formation of antibodies against adam -Statin. And this can be achieved with immunotherapies, which can be more or less uh, 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 specific. So I can use reduximab to specifically target B cells, cyclosporin uh, to target T cells, more recently, uh, 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 attempt uh, has been made to uh, 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 directly target plasma cells with bortezomib. And uh, historically, other uh, immunosuppressors have been used, such as steroids, as well as cyclososmide. And the third and uh, uh, most recent uh, strategy is to inhibit the, the pathologic interaction between VWF and platelets. And this has been uh, uh, achieved with the use of caplacizumab 
which is a nanobody able to uh, 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 recognize the A1 domain of VWF and prevent the excessive interaction between VWF and platelets. So this is the historical treatment of uh, autoimmune TTP. Uh, the standard treatment uh, consists in daily plasma exchange in association with steroids in emergency until remission. This has been for years the core treatment of TTP. <coughs> and this, with this regimen, the prognosis of the disease has been outstandingly improved since with this regimen, remission and survival is currently of uh, more than 85%. Whereas before the systematic use of this regimen, uh, patients, uh, 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 almost all patients died from the disease. So this regimen ha has been a, a cornerstone in the management of the disease. However, uh, there uh, some unmet needs uh, were still present despite the use of this regimen. First, uh, uh, patients could experience exacerbations of the disease despite daily plasma exchange and this is a frequent event since it occurs in up to 50 percent of patients you can see that in those patients despite an adaptive treatment you can observe for still unclear reasons uh, a drop in platelet count after an initial improvement of the patient's condition and this can be uh, uh, this can uh, uh, occur many times in a patient and this translates in a, a, a prolonged uh, time of treatment. So the, the other uh, uh, unfavorable outcome with the standard treatment is refractoriness. In those patients, despite an adaptive treatment, you, can, uh, you cannot see any response to treatment and patients may remain many days and sometimes some weeks with a severe thrombocytopenia and uh, 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 this uh, condition involves uh, up to 10% of patients. So those two uh, conditions, exacerbations and refractoriness, which are called uh, suboptimal responses to standard treatment, expose patients to a higher risk of death and to complications uh, uh, of the, uh, the treatment. And uh, at the time, uh, uh, that uh, uh, TTP was becoming uh, a disease of uh, uh, better prognosis, it was mandatory to improve, uh, uh, to still more improve the prognosis of disease and to address those uh, caveats. So for that, we started to use a rituximab in this uh, disease and rituximab clearly uh, in association with the standard treatment allowed to limit the duration of plasma exchange treatment in those patients. So we started to observe that the long-term responders uh, were uh, uh, less and less uh, common in the end. And with the use of rituximab, we clearly could uh, 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 limit the duration of plasma exchange treatments. However, the bad news with the use of rituximab is that uh, it is not uh, efficient in real time. And this is a concern because in this disease, we need compounds that are uh, uh, efficient uh, immediately, of course. With the use of rituximab, once you start the course of rituximab, you have to wait for two weeks before platelets recover durably. So during this two weeks window, patients can still worsen their disease and even die. So there was a need to find a compound able to protect patients until rituximab is efficient. <coughs> the other very interesting point uh, uh, that was uh, observed with the use of rituximab is that uh, rituximab is able to protect patients from uh, early uh, relapses. So you can see here, on this uh, uh, trial uh, 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 driven by the UK group, that patients who received rituximab frontline immediately after the diagnosis of TTP, after they uh, uh, recovered from the TTP episode, you can see that these patients were remarkably protected from relapses for uh, 12 to 18 months. 
On the opposite, patients who did not receive uh, uh, rituximab in association with plasma exchange relapsed quite rapidly after the, an initial recovery of the disease. So for this reason, uh, as uh, rituximab remarkably protects patients from a relapse, there is a strong cons uh, uh, Recommendation, recommendation now to propose to these patients systematically rituximab in association to plasma exchange and uh, steroids uh, as soon as uh, the diagnosis of TTP is made. So the third chapter of the management of TTP is the use of uh, caplacizumab. So again, caplacizumab is the first nanobody uh, that uh, uh, could be uh, used uh, uh, routinely uh, in uh, clinical practice, and this nanobody is able to recognize the A1 domain of VWF and to prevent the interaction between the A1 domain of VWF and the GP1B receptor on platelets. So caplacizumab has been evaluated on two uh, international randomized control trials, the Titan and the Hercules trials. You can see here the flow chart of the Hercules trial that randomized 145 patients uh, 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 with uh, either placebo or capacizumab in association for both arms uh, with the standard treatment and for most uh, uh, patients reduximab. So the prim primary endpoint of the study, uh, uh, of both studies, was the time to first tatted count recovery. So you can see here the integrated analysis of Titan and Hercules. And you can see that for patients who received caplacizumab, for uh, those patients, platelet count recovered faster than those patients who received uh, the placebo. And uh, this is an interesting uh, uh, result because this means that patients who received placebo, uh, 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 caplacizumab remained thrombocytopenic uh, for a shorter uh, uh, time. And this is important because those patients die from the disease during this period of thrombocytopenia. So less exposure to thrombocytopenia means less exposure to death. More interestingly, this positive aspect of caplacizumab was uh, 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 specifically observed during the very early uh, uh, time of the management. Uh, the difference between the two curves was uh, really uh, uh, clear uh, during the first two weeks of the management. And this is interesting because if you remember, this is the window during which rituximab is still not efficient. So one could see caplacizumab as a compound able to protect patients with TTP until rituximab improves adamstatin activity. So clearly, caplacizumab and reduximab are two uh, 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 complementary compounds uh, that uh, improve the prognosis of TTP. So these are the secondary uh, uh, outcomes of the, the studies. You can see very interestingly that the, uh, uh, the fact that patients recover platelet count earlier translates in less deaths you can see that in the caplacizumab arms, no death was observed versus four deaths in the placebo groups. More strikingly, exacerbations were only observed in less than 6% of patients in the caplacizumab arms versus 35% in the placebo arms. So this is a very uh, 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 important difference. And at the bottom of the slide, you can see that no patient experienced uh, refractoriness in the caplacizumab arms versus seven cases of uh, uh, refractoriness in the placebo arms. So on the basis of these uh, results, uh, uh, caplacizumab uh, uh, obtained uh, a label to be used uh, uh, in autoimmune TTP frontline as soon as the clinical diagnosis is made. So France was uh, one of the first countries to uh, allow the use of caplacizumab in such a condition. 
and uh, we could uh, uh, benefit uh, from an early access uh, program in France. So during this uh, period of time, we uh, set up a regimen that we called the Kaplavi regimen to uh, address the usefulness and the tolerance of Kaplacizumab uh, in these patients in a real world condition. So this uh, regimen is derived from the Hercules uh, trial. And uh, uh, in this trial, we treated patients as soon as they had a clinical diagnosis based on our uh, clinical score, the French score. So for those patients with uh, a, a French score of two, which means a CV thrombocytopenia and a mild renal involvement, those patients were treated frontline with a daily plasma exchange, immunosuppression with uh, rituximab and steroids, and caplacizumab daily. As soon as platelets recovered, we stopped plasma exchange and we continued caplacizumab until uh, Adam Stettin uh, activity recovery. <laughs> this is to show the clinical features of these patients uh, on diagnosis. Those patients have had typical features of TTP. And uh, during the period of this uh, uh, study that uh, ran uh, for 18 months, we could uh, analyze 90 patients that were treated with this triplet regimen. And we compared the outcome of these patients to our host historical cohorts of patients. Uh, and we uh, set up uh, this uh, cohort that included 180 historical patients recruited from uh, 2015 to uh, 18. And uh, as you can see in this uh, table, uh, those patients were strictly comparable uh, on diagnosis. Biologically, uh, uh, we had uh, also uh, uh, features that were comparable between both groups. And uh, uh, you have here the detail of the treatment to show that virtually all patients had uh, uh, steroids and uh, all patients in the uh, triplet regimen had a rituximab versus 68% of patients in the historical cohort because historically we use rituximab as a salvage therapy instead of a frontline as we do now. Our primary outcome was a clinical outcome. It was a composite of death and refractoriness. And you can see that only two patients out of 90 reached this uh, outcome in the triplet regimen versus 22 patients, 12% in the historical cohort with a uh, statistically uh, significant difference. Interestingly, the favorable outcome of patients in the triplet regimen was irrespective of the severity of patients on diagnosis. So this means that uh, the triplet regimen could circumvent the bad prognosis of the historical prognosis factors in this disease. Regarding secondary outcomes, interestingly, you can see that we observed only one death in the triplet regimen. Mm -hmm. So uh, only one death in the triplet uh, regimen versus uh, uh, 12 deaths in the historical cohorts. So uh, this difference was almost uh, statistically significant. Here again, refractoriness was strikingly different. 1% uh, in the triplet regimen versus 18% in the historical cohorts. And exacerbations were uh, rare in the triplet regimen, 3.4% versus 44%. And the remaining results show that we could observe a dramatic alleviation of the burden of care of these patients. So I will uh, skip some uh, slides to uh, uh, show you uh, that uh, this is the uh, typical uh, response of patients with our triplet regimen that includes plasma exchange, immunosuppression, and capacizumab. You can see that this 45-year-old woman uh, had a severe condition. She had a, a TTP with cerebral and cardiac involvement. She had typical features of TTP, so we were confident in starting immediately the triplet regimen. And you can see that despite the severity of the disease, platelet count on the left improved nicely and durably. 
And on the right side of the slide, you can see that LDH level reflecting organ injury uh, dropped rapidly and durably. And this patient is now well. While she was uh, exposed uh, to uh, uh, bad outcomes, so we clearly could, with the use of this triplet regimen, prevent bad outcomes in these patients. So uh, I will skip this slide because uh, regarding side events, we had no uh, red light regarding the uh, uh, um, side events uh, uh, in comparison with the uh, clinical trials. So I will skip the prevention of relapse, just to say that with the use of rituximab, we can now prevent most of relapses in these uh, patients. Now we'll move to the uh, conclusion uh, directly. So uh, with the triplet regimen, which associates uh, adam supplementation with plasma exchange, and soon we hope with the recombinant adam immunosuppression with corticosteroids and rituximab, and capacizumab to inhibit the interaction between VWF and platelets, we dramatically improve the uh, prognosis of the disease since we uh, observe almost no death in these patients and almost no exacerbations. Uh, so uh, this uh, triplet regimen is now the standard of care uh, in France and in uh, uh, an increasing number of countries in the world. So uh, um, this uh, triplet regimen with the use of especially capacizumab should uh, still decrease the death rate uh, at the acute phase of the disease. And uh, uh, once again, these uh, uh, new therapies, uh, including capacizumab, but also rituximab, derived from uh, the understanding of TTP pathophysiology are uh, uh, increasing the, 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 the good prognosis of the, of the disease. So with that, I will stop here to keep the time and thank all my colleagues uh, who work with me uh, on this uh, topic in France and throughout the, the world. And thank you again for your invitation. Thank you, Prof. Kropo, for this uh, very uh, extensive and uh, elegant presentation.